Hey guys, Modeling Weekly here. In this week's video, I'll be taking a look at building, painting and weathering Tamiya's 148th scale Easy 8, an absolutely gorgeous kit that lives up to the reputation Tamiya has built for itself. I really hope you enjoy this one, so let's get right into the video. Upon opening the box, you are greeted with a pretty standard set of box contents. All of the dark green plastic parts, metal weights, decal sheet, instruction warning booklets, as well as a string that is supposed to imitate a tow line. I think I'll be replacing this later on down the line. All of the plastic parts themselves are very nicely packed in separate plastic bags. Having a look at the parts themselves in more detail, it's exactly the sort of thing you'd expect from Tamiya. Absolutely no flash or moulding residue could be found on the parts, and all of the details are crisply and beautifully moulded to perfection. As is often seen on these smaller scale Tamiya kits though, there are some simplified details. For example, some of the weld beads and grab handles could be replaced with better upgrades, spoiler alert. There is also quite a nice cast texture present on the appropriate areas of the tank, though this is pretty subtle and would benefit from improvement. Some stippling here with diluted putty would go down pretty damn nicely. The tracks are also of the link and length variety, which is nice to see instead of that nasty rubber version. The first step in the tank's construction was gluing these weights into the hull. I'm not sure if they have a purpose other than making the tank feel heavier, but I guess there's no harm adding them either way. Tamiya Extra Thin could then be used to construct the rest of the hull components, which fitted like a glove as you'd expect. In order to add a bit of wear and tear to the road wheels and return rollers, I made use of my Swan Morton 10A scalpel blade to gouge out some tiny chunks of wheel, imitating damage caused by irregularities in the terrain and jagged rocks. Following the addition of the wheels and running gear, the construction process was pretty damn straightforward and didn't take long at all. Good old Tamiya quality. I'd just like to quickly take a moment to say a regular massive thanks to the Modeling Weekly channel members here on YouTube. Your support is absolutely invaluable and helps a huge amount to keep the channel running. Thank you so much for your continued charity, it is highly appreciated. If you'd like to find out more about what being a channel member entails, feel free to check the join button down below for more info. Anyway, back to the video. Time for some of those armor texture improvements I mentioned earlier. These were added by diluting some Tamiya Grey putty with cellulose thinners, a cheap alternative to extra thin cement for messy tasks like this one. It was then stippled on with an old brush to achieve a nice pitted texture. Next up, it was time to add some flame cut marks to the edges of the exposed panels, predominantly the front and rear glacis plates. This was again done with the 10A scalpel and smoothened off with some extra thin. At this point I made use of 0.3mm copper wire, bent into shape with some tweezers in order to replace the nasty existing grab handles. They were glued in place with black CA glue. Now 
Now let's sort out those missing welding seams. Whilst a lot of them are included on the kit, there are some that are missing. For example, around this extra armour plating. This was imitated by rolling some Tamiya epoxy putty into a very fine worm using some water and a flat surface, which was then pressed into place gently with a cocktail stick. Water was used continually throughout the process to smoothen it off. Finally, well details were added using a pointed tool made from a drinks can. I then decided to imitate some shell impact on the front glacis by adding an indent with a dremel and then filling it with some raw grey putty. The shape of the impact was then created with the blunt end of a paintbrush. The turret on this tank is almost entirely cast, so a lot of cast texture mixture was added here. With the turret's construction complete, it was time for the painting stage. This was initiated with Mr. Mahogany Surfacer, the perfect base for an olive drab AFV. It allows for some nice shading whilst maintaining that warmth that is lost with a black base. This was sprayed at roughly 20 psi through my 0.4mm Ultra. The first proper colour that I laid down was AKRC Olive Drab, which is my favourite version of the colour out of all of the manufacturers. This was applied not in a solid coat, but slightly mottled, so that some of the base primer coat would show through and provide some tonal variation. A lot of this would be covered with the following lighter coats, but some still showed through and created a nice effect. In order to lighten the olive drab, I added a couple of drops of buff. This helped to bring up the contrast whilst not desaturating the base colour. This is what white would have done. I tried to focus this more towards the centres of panels and larger areas so that it would remain dark and gloomy around the more compact detailed areas. Then I did the same as before, except this time with even more buff added. This new mixture was focused even more inwards than before, so it started to create more of a gradient effect towards the edge of the panels, almost a vignette in a way.
Finally, the mix was lightened until it was almost entirely buff. This was focused solely where light would reflect and rest on the most, highlighting the most prominent features of the vehicle. With the shading done, a dark brown ammo shader was loaded into the airbrush and used to darken some of the joints between panels. This was predominantly focused around the engine deck to add a more grimy aesthetic to this area. I did however add some to the rest of the tank to tie it all together. I took this moment to have a bit of a rest and paint up the tyres on the return rollers and road wheels. This didn't have to be exact as they would be covered with dirt later on, though it provides a nice contrast to the olive drab base coat and some extra realism. For this build, I really didn't want to deal with Tamiya decals, so instead I made use of some custom masks that I created by cutting around the kit supplied decals with a scalpel. These were then placed onto the surface and sprayed over with both black and white. I thought the black turret markings were quite a nice touch and added a bit of variation to the build. With the markings sprayed, I loaded some pure buff into my airbrush and used this as a pre-dusting mix that was sprayed all over the lower hull. This would provide a nice base for some dust effects later on. I also sprayed the buff onto some areas around the upper hull where dust would normally accumulate, for example on top of the fenders and around the turret ring. Another semi-gloss varnish was then sprayed to seal in the paintwork before weathering commenced. I started off the weathering process by applying a nice dark homemade pin wash using oil paints and white spirit. This was a mix of burnt umber and black. A fine brush was used to tap this onto any finer details in order to highlight them and make them really pop. A white spirit dampened brush was then used to clean up and blend in any excess wash. The satin base coat really helped at this point as it is porous enough for the varnish to be blended in, whilst also being smooth enough that it can be easily manipulated and removed completely if necessary. A light olive drab tone was then mixed from various colours including Russian World War II uniform and buff, which was then carefully applied to areas where chips and scratches would build up over time. This was done by using both a sponge and a very fine brush, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. 
Whilst the sponge allows for quick and easy chipping in areas where wear and tear is heavier, it's not as effective at adding finer chips. And this is where the brush comes in. A dark steel colour was then added into the heavier areas of superficial chipping to show where the paint has worn away down to the base metal. Ammo rust streaking effects were finally added to the exposed steel areas and blended in with a white spirit dampened brush. Residue from the drainage holes was then imitated using slightly thinned oil paint, applied again with a fine brush. White spirit was used to direct the flow of the drainage, making it look more realistic and believable. The same dark oil paint was then used to imitate a burnt paint effect in the shell impacts, blended outwards around the edges. This actually came out quite nicely for such a simple effect. Following some extra streaks and stains on the turret, I moved on to adding some dry earth enamel effects from Ammo. Just like last time with the buff, these were focused around areas where dust would tend to build up over time, such as in the recesses of the fenders and around the stationary elements of the running gear. Blending was performed by a larger brush wetted with white spirit. Now it was time to paint up the tools along with any other smaller details that were left unpainted beforehand. The steel tools and steel elements were again painted with a dark grey metal base coat, which was followed up by a hefty coat of rust streaking effects that made them more at home on the tank. Wooden aspects of the tools were painted with Bioco old wood and textured with some burnt umber paints off camera. Nearing the end of the build, it was time to add the tracks. I decided to go with a bit of a different technique for these. I began by using the same mahogany primer as earlier as a base coat, which served as quite a nice starting colour for rust. In order to create a rusty effect, I then mixed up a sort of medium rust tone from XF7 and X6, which was sprayed onto selective links. This was repeated with lighter tones of rust afterwards.
Some extra dry earth effects were then brushed onto the exposed areas of the tracks following the installation process. With the turret added, this build was complete. For a bit of an intermediary slash mojo build, I'm quite happy with the result if I do say so myself. I think that the tonal variation in that olive drab definitely could have turned out worse, so there's nothing really to complain about. In the future, I'd probably add a bit more towards the lighter end of the spectrum, as some of those highlights have been lost to the various weathering stages, but overall I'm pretty happy. As for the kit itself, it was absolutely stunning. Only a handful of modifications were necessary, and these were hardly time-consuming. As I mentioned during the build, the fit was absolutely superb. A wonderful little kit from Tamiya. Well, that's pretty much all I have for you this week. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like as it helps out the channel massively, and make sure to comment your opinion of the build down below. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you around here next time. Bye!